the medical and health benefits of music. It's incredible. Yeah, as ever, uh, these are my two main things of interest, music and science. The science behind how useful music is is incredible, really, Anthony. All kinds of benefits. Of course, first and foremost, in my head, the immune system. There's a study showing, if you listen to music, right, an antibody called IgA goes up in your body, and these antibodies can fight viruses and bacteria. You know? An IgA lines your nose, it's in your upper airways, and there's really good evidence that listening, enjoying music boosts IgA levels. Uh, secondly, cells called natural killer cells, there's a great name for you, they're virus busting cells. They go up in your circulation when you listen to music, so music is a really beneficial thing for, for immunity as well. Does that mean that there would have been, or there could have been, an evolutionary selection for traditional societies that had drums, music, dance, all the rest of it? Yeah, very much. It's a mystery why we like music. It kind of marks us as, as a species. Us humans love, now some animals like dogs can, can respond to music, obviously, but humans are especially interested in music and there must be some evolutionary reason. One could well be your immune boost that you get from listening to music. The, the second big one, no doubt, is social bonding. We're, we're a social species and we, when we go to the, a, a, a thing like Electric Picnic, massive social bonding is happening and that's good for us as a species as well. So that might be the other reason. Is it the same physiological benefit listening to music as it is participating in the creation of music? Do you, are you healthier if you're in a band? You are. There's good evidence for this. Now, most of all, a choir. There's loads of studies on being in a choir is hugely beneficial. Uh, first of all, it's, it's a social thing, remember, which we like, socialising. You're concentrating on the music. You're not worrying about your paying your mortgage or whatever it might be. That's very good for your mental health as well. And really nice as well, Anthony, is uh, staves off decline in a way, you know, and there's good studies showing it's stave off Alzheimer's even if you're in a choir because you're concentrating on you're, you're, you're flexing your brain muscle if you will so again the, the advice would be if you want to join a choir it'll do the world a good way Is there also a possibility of a placebo effect of spirituality that if you believe that you're in an activity that gets you closer to God and be, will be rewarded for it it might just keep you a bit healthier Oh God I'm, I'm a scientist now. I couldn't possibly answer that <laughs> but you never know yeah we wouldn't rule that out either I guess yeah. <laughs> Does any of this matter depending on socioeconomic status any of the rest of it as in do you get the same benefit all the way through your life or is there a peak time where music helps you well there's a fantastic study which is the main thing I want to tell you about this morning just out this week the science never ends on music there's a study showing if you learn an instrument as a child or as a teenager you can see benefits decades later in, in, in your brain basically your cognitive skills are higher in those who've, listened, who've, who've learned an instrument in, 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 uh, in child and there's something happening in their brains they learn the piano say their brains are being wired in a certain way and that was seen, you know, 60, 70 years later, they measured the, the cognitive skills of people and correlated it to those who learned an instrument in the teenage years. Isn't that amazing? Now, now there could be what I call confounding variables here, like socioeconomic background or health. They rule those out. And what, it, what they put it down to was someone learning piano or guitar as a teenager. Decades later, they perform better in, in mental reasoning and spatial reasoning, numerical tests. So it looks as if music is really benefiting our brains, you know, through our lives in many ways. You know, so it's, it's a fascinating study. Did you ever see the documentary on the man who was the, I think he was a BBC uh, music producer who lost all but his repeating short term memory. So every day was a reset. And the only thing he was left that was long term was the capacity to play the yeah. organ. Yeah, well, people will tell you this. I mean, and, and one example that I'm involved in, the, the mobile music machine is a group of musicians. Gerald Peregrine leads them, goes into nursing homes and it's massively beneficial for people in nursing homes, first of all. And, and lots of evidence for why this would be, by the way. One thing is you never forget what you learned as a child. And we know this from, sadly, Alzheimer's sufferers will often still remember the songs they learned as children. That seems to be the thing that's sustained in your brain. So again, that's very interesting, isn't it? It gets laid down in the brain and almost never goes away, you know. And these studies show if you, if you play music in a nursing home or a care home setting, less anxiety, less depression in the people in the nursing home. Isn't that remarkable? So again, music is, is very beneficial. And a, a reduction well. in anxiety and depression during the music itself or does it last? It lasts. It, it, it lasts. Afterwards? Yeah, in fact, what we've found with the mobile music machine is we, we played in the Asgard, for example, last Friday in our club and a big thank you to Paddy and Andrea who, who run that nursing home. They would tell you for days after the people remember the concert that happened. It still resonates. Isn't that marvellous with them? And, and of course their family hear about it so there's, there's lots of benefits that are sustained in that way as well. Does it matter what instrument? Do you get the same effect from guitar as you get from saxophone? Well that's a good one. So, so they looked at different instruments right? and, and the instruments that people had learned as children were mainly piano. We all are sent, many are sent for piano lessons aren't we? You know, Some learn the bagpipes. You might think that might be negative. One of my great jokes is um, someone who's musical who's someone who can play the bagpipes but chooses not to. That's, <laughs> so maybe that's 
one instrument not to play but it turns out any instrument because you're learning you see, you're concentrating there's the notes you're learning to read music you're the chord sequences that's very nourishing really for the brain is the way to think it's any any music and instrument will suffice and really. presumably as well if you're picking one to last into old age ones like the bagpipes or the bugle might be a challenge physically to that's be able true. to manage as you yeah. get that little bit older a bit antisocial maybe yeah.